Hello, I'm back. So I don't know if I was if I was even paying attention to myself, but I forgot to mention this at the uh, at the start of this is that I'm trying to stop myself from saying the f word a lot because I like just use it way too much, like a freaking sailor mouth, and I need to get out of that habit. So, uh, hi. We did just come from a spooky wax museum. <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to. to Condition myself to say duck instead of the F word <laughs> to get myself out of doing it because I do I do it way too much and it needs to stop somehow somewhere. So uh, if I do happen to say the F word, by all means, quack at me because <laughs> I need to stop it. It is October 23rd, 8.52 a.m., the Old Bailey's Defendant's Lobby. It's been six months since I was banned from defending in court. And yet, here I am again. Oh, also, we are definitely not going to get through the entire trial. No. I have at least an hour, for, about 40 to an hour of energy left to do this, so yeah, we're not, we're not going to get through this trial today. <laughs> No! Uh, Mr. Naruhodo! Good morning, Dr. Dirtpoor. What is this, Mr. Naruhodo? Uh, I've never experienced such an oppressive atmosphere before. I feel it too, every time I come here. It's terrifying. Are you telling me that my homeland, England, has finally managed to develop some sort of technology that allows them to manipulate the weight of the atmosphere at will? I'm pretty sure it's mostly an emotional thing. Oh, anyway. Is... Uh, is our... Okay. Are you ready for today, Mr. Naruhodo? Please defend my life in the trial today. Defend the secret behind my theory. What powers... Which powers my hyperelectric instantaneous teleportation device? Yes, I will. In order to do that... I'll have to prove that the huge explosion two days ago was an accident. But, we'll be fine. I'm sure everything will go just swimmingly. Too bad, Mr. Naruhodo. Looks like you drew the short straw with this client. Homesan, you're here. And on time. What? You're so mean. I can't believe you just left me behind. It took me an hour to wake Homesy up, I'll have you know. Are you him? Sherlock Holmes! Is that you? That's right. It's me, Sherlock Holmes, in the flesh. I left England and immigrated to Germany, but even I've heard of you. Oh, right. They sell the Strand magazine in Germany too, don't they? This month's issue was thrilling as usual. The adventure of the Silver Blaze and that famous deduction. Ah, that case is etched deeply in my memory. It was the one with the snake, right? No! That was the adventure of the Speckled Band. Anyway, Homesan, thanks for coming today. Waking up early to cheer me on. Uh, sorry to have to break it to you, but I'm actually busy. Huh? I've got to go to Madame Rosad's now. Are you posing as a temporary wax figure again today? No, no! It's about the kidnapping! The madam finally requested my service! Oh, you mean the ransom note for the stolen wax figure? This week's pay! Uh, the wax figure's life depends on it, after all. This is the case that even I have to focus on seriously! In that case, I guess there's no choice, huh? Well, I could wrap up a case like that before breakfast if I really put my mind to it. I'll solve it in two shakes of a lamb's tail and be back before you know it. Well, to be precise. I have no breakfast to eat until I get paid for solving it. Well then, I guess you really will have to give it your all. That's right. But in life's typical ir ironic fashion, I'm always at my hungriest when I need to focus the hardest on a case. 
What are the chances of that? I suppose it's just one of those eternal mysteries. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes, yes. I understand that feeling perfectly. Yare, yare. Anyway, Miss Dr. Dirtpore, I wish you luck. Thank you very much. You know, I'm getting slightly worried about my 3DS now because the last time I did the thing where the sound picked up, that means the USB is starting to fail me. I'm a little scared. I'm slightly worried now. Just a little worried. I hope I hope my 3DS is fine because uh these things cost money. <laughs> oh, one more thing, Mr. Nodaholdo. Could I have a quick word with you over there? What is it? That you're rather close when it comes to science, I figure I should let you know. Hyperelectric instantaneous teleportation? It's truly the technologies of dreams, but realizing the doctor's the little doctor's theory would be completely impossible. But the doctor said his experiment was a success. Yes, it appears that he truly believes that. I read through Benny's papers too, but I think it's a logical impossibility, at least on Earth. That must mean the doctor's theory is off by a lot, huh? An impossible experiment was a success. I guess that means there's a contradiction here, huh? Indeed, that contradiction is probably the most important point in to this trial. What could this mean? Well, anyway, I must be off. I wish you luck as well. Okay, work hard, Holmesy. Anyway, you'll be on your own today, so do your best, okay? Huh? What are you gonna do, Iris Chan? Oh, I've got something I've gotta take care of, so I've gotta go too. I see. <laughs> have a big surprise waiting for you later. Sure. Wonder what it is. Naruhodo's gonna be by himself? Oh no! He usually has someone with him! Defend it! Defense! It's time for the trial to begin. Proceed to the courtroom at once. Huh. Right. science experiment that couldn't have possibly been a success. And the doctor, who insisted that it was, got to find the answer to that contradiction. Not a Hodoria Nosuke. Oh no, he's by himself. I worry for him. Baby. You do this, Not a Hodo. I believe you got, um, four, five cases now? Under your belt, yes. <laughs> Same day, nine ten in nine uh, nine ten in the morning. Old Bailey Supreme Court. <gasps> Do we get new jurors? Like legit? Now then, in the name of the Queen, I now declare court to be in session. We will now begin the fair and impartial trial of the defendant, Benjamin Dirtpoor. Are both the prosecution and defense prepared to make their case? Prosecution is ready. The defense is ready. It's been six months since my last trial, and today. Oh no! Oh no! Usado san isn't here. I'm fighting this battle alone. Ugh. Maybe it's my imagination. The atmosphere in here feels even heavier today than usual. Now then, the victim in this case was Mr. Kingsley, if I... 
Mr. Kingsley. I remember him. Conrad Kingsley, the investor. In reality, he was the leader of a certain criminal organization. You attempted to bring Mr. Kingsley to justice last month, Lord Vinesings, but... The verdict that the jurors handed down was a unanimous not guilty. But apparently the jurors had been bought off. I guess this is what they mean when they say that criminals will do anything for a not guilty verdict. Then, two days ago, Mr. Kingsley passed away. Could this, be the, could this have been the work of the Grim Reaper? If this is to be considered retribution, then perhaps it was. Regardless, Conrad Kingsley was murdered by the defendant, Benjamin Dirtpour. Very well. In that case, allow me to ask the six level-headed jurors selected from the population of the Imperial City this. Are you prepared to perform your role in this trial? I am extremely humble, hum extremely and humbly delighted to have been summoned to such a distinguished trial. The thought of clutching someone else's fate in my hands and crushing it, it sends shivers up my spine. Science, magic, spite of hands in the court. They're all nothing more than shows to fool the masses. Charlatanic scientists who tarnish the reputation of science should be obliterated at once. I will give both sides cases fair consideration. Um, and then make a decision. Is that right? Is that a child? Oh, it's him! Things were better back in my day. They weren't like this. <laughs> hey, that guy there. It's the patrolman who looks like the murderous officer Ottermole. He's looking pretty tired again today. Now then, as all of you already know, the incident on the trial today. The incident trial today is a tragedy that occurred at the newly opened London World's Fair. The one blessing amidst this tragedy is that there were no casualties aside from the victim. But this new technology, which was meant to fill people with hope, has turned into a horrific disaster. Therefore, one can say that the attention of the whole of London, no, the whole world, is focused on the outcome of this trial. It would be best if we brought this trial to a swift and just conclusion for the world to see. Now then, please begin with an outline of the case, Lord Vanseeks. Firstly, the most important thing to know about this incident is the fact that it involves a new piece of technology, the likes of which no one has ever even seen before. New technology? I did hear that the government is hoping to use the London's World's Fair to get their hands on some. On some money? Oh, hands on some. No. Hyperelectric instantaneous teleportation. This bit of technology said to have been developed by the defendant. In instantaneous teleportation? It used extremely high voltage electricity to break the human body down into particles and instantly transport them to another location. Okay, if you shove all that electricity into someone's body, I'm pretty sure they explode. <laughs> and once it reaches that location, the body is returned to its original state. That's what the device does. But is such a thing even possible? I find that hard to believe. Breaking a person down with electricity. I could understand zapping them, but... Ha! Ah, ludicrous. Realizing such a theory would be impossible. You're a doctor and a member of the Royal Science Association, correct? That's right. So you can rest assured that I know what I'm talking about. Teleportation is nothing more than a foolish fantasy. So this prominent doctor agrees with Holmes-san that it's impossible. What is, the, what is the prosecution's opinion regarding the matter? Our opinion is this. We would like to assert that the teleportation was successful. Oh. 
if if the prosecution is saying that, so we have to prove that it wasn't possible. What? Ridiculous. Pansies? Order! Order! The defendant's theory is currently undergoing investigation by the English government. And depending on the result of that investigation, they may end up paying a large sum in resource support funds. The defendant used his technology for evil and took the life of his investor, Kingslay, in order to obtain the research funding. So then... The tragedy that occurred here was by no means an accident. It was premeditated. It was a premeditated act intended to rob the victim of his life. Very well. The court understands the prosecution's position. In that case, we ask the prosecution to provide proof of that. As you wish. The cape's off! Escort the first witnesses to the stand at once. Benjamin and Gregson? Okay. Witnesses, your names and occupation. Sir. Tobias Gregson, sir. I'm a detective with the Homicide Division at Scotland Yard. I served as an observer for the experiment that day and was in charge of the crime scene investigation after that. <laughs> I'm Benjamin De Benjamin Dirtpaw, a, a, a scientist. The defendant was born in England but later relocated to Germany to pursue his research. That's right. I graduated from London University and immigrated to Germany, where I developed my miraculous theory. I came to the London World's Fair to unveil my miraculous experiment! Well, the only thing you actually unveil was a miraculous explosion. However, but I did manage to teleport him! You all must have seen it too! True, an unfortunate accident occurred, but... That part was a success! I suppose it was. Here's a photo that the Forensic Investigation Division took at the crime scene. Is this the symbol of the, London's, of the London World's Fair? The Crystal Tower? Yes, the victim appears to have been stabbed cleanly in the gut. Hmm, very well. Kindly submit this into evidence. Crime scene photo. Crystal Tower. A picture of the crime scene showing that the victim had been teleported to the Crystal Tower. He seems to have been stabbed in the chest. Oh. Well, that's new. The victim killed in the experiment was Mr. Conrad Kingsley. There was some unsavory rumor circulating about him, but saying there was a side. He was a collaborator with the defendant in his research, and he funded this experiment. So in other words, the defendant took the life of the person who was funding his research. Is that what you're saying? That's what it would mean. However, the big explosion indicates that the experimental device was likely broken, does it not? That's right! I put my heart and soul into calibrating my lovely device. My poor darling. You saw it yourself yesterday, did you not? You weren't able to investigate the wreckage due to the special provision for the protection of science and technology rubbish. Oh, what do you mean, wreckage? <laughs> but if that's the case, wouldn't it be very difficult to prove... Wouldn't it be very difficult to prove any of this? But it was an accident or murder, I mean. Actually, it's incredibly simple. What? Isn't that right, witness? Oh, huh? Uh, are you talking to me? No, the other witness. Yes, it was murder. Anyone could come to that would come to the same conclusion. But what the heck is that supposed to mean? Very well. In that case, the court will now hear your testimony. Regarding your grounds for determining what that what occurred behind the scenes of that experiment was murder. <sighs> oh, 
The grounds for murder. A body fell from the crystal tower and fractured its spine. Well, that was because I, well, I miscalculated the angle of fire. That was the accident. However, when the body was autopsied, another fatal wound was discovered. There was a wound left from when the victim had been stabbed through the heart with a sharp instrument. The crossbow? The victim was killed before the teleportation occurred, and it would have been impossible for anyone but the defendant to have done so. Good lord. Not only was his spine fractured, but he also been stabbed through the heart. It's the first time I heard any of those details. Uh, typical Ace Attorney time. I can assure you that the wound was fatal enough for him to have died instantly. In other words, if I may be so bold, the defendant essentially killed the victim twice. That's what this means. No, no! You didn't have to put it quite so boldly! Here's the program for the experiment that was submitted to the security division. The victim who was inside this cage-like contraption was supposed to have been teleported. To the third floor area of the Crystal Tower, positioned about 25 yards away. However, in reality, that's not what happened. As the device was activated, the explosion occurred. The impact caused the device's emitting port to point upwards. Due to that, the cage was teleported into midair. Oh, and then plummeted downwards, where he crashed through the circular window of the crystal tower. Ah, and the impact from that was what caused the victim's neck to break. What is it with necks? I I'm so sorry, the device was just too powerful. That was completely, honestly, nothing more than an unfortunate accident. However, we can't dismiss this as a mere accident. After all, the victim had been stabbed through the heart with a sharp instrument. What are you talking about? What instrument? This is the autopsy report that was submitted to the prosecutor's office. I'd like to submit it as evidence. Very well. The court accepts it. Autopsy report. A report of Miss, A record of Mr. Kingslay's autopsy. His neck was broken by the impact of the fall, and he was stabbed in the chest with a sharp instrument. Ow. That's just brutal. But I witnessed the joke that joke of an experiment. The only two people on that stage were Mr. Kingslay and that quack doctor. In that case, the only possible culprit would have to be Miss to be Mr. Quack. Hmm, I suppose so. Now then, defense, your cross-examination. Yes, your honor. It's been a while since my last cross-examination. Show them what we've got. Oh. Okay. Okay, what are we doing here? It was miscalculated angle of fire, that was the accident. Press. Up. Did you calculate the angle yourself, Doctor? Yep, no one but me could have done such advanced calculations. And the result was a miscalculation. That's right! There's such advanced calculations that even I made a mistake. Maybe I could learn a thing or two from this single-minded optimism. I factored in the height of my subject, Mr. Kingsley, his weight, the direction of the wind at the time, the temperature. It all should have been accounted for. So, why? Well, you must have factored in the weight of the clothes Kingsley son was wearing too, right? Uh? Oh, I see. The answer should have been three! Oh my god. I have a feeling we won't be getting any safe experiments from him anytime soon. There was a wound left from the victim stabbed through the heart with a sharp instrument! Mata! 
the defense didn't receive any such information about this vital fact. This record from the Forensic Investigation Unit of the Yard only arrived this morning. The prosecution didn't know about it either. I apologize for this unavoidable fact. That was an awfully dispassionate half-baked apology. So... So then, uh, what was this sharp instrument? One of the tools in particular among those brought to the crime scene by the defendant caught our attention. It was this. The uh -huh! is it's that My sweet and a wingman! Andrew! Andrew! Andrew? Yes! Well, my tools are like friends to me, see? I've given them all names and we spend all days together. <laughs> my flathead screwdriver is Andrew! My Phillips screwdriver is Michael! Your beloved Mr. Andrew seems to be soiled by some sort of dark red stain. No, it, it can't be. I'm afraid it can. This is clearly blood. What? And one more thing. Long, sharp Mr. Andrew there is a perfect match for the shape of the victim's wound. What? Order! Order! In any case, let's accept the defendant's friend into evidence. True driver. The sharp end is covered in blood and matches the shape of the victim's wound. Dr. Dirtpoor considers it his wingman and has named it Andrew. Does, uh, does Dirtpoor also name all the chalices that Baroque has? So, Dr. Dirtpoor's screwdriver was the weapon. That's pretty much the last thing I wanted to hear. Victim was killed before the teleportation occurred. It would have been possible for anyone but the defendant to have done so. Mata! You know what? I want to present the crossbow, but we're not there yet. How can you say that so decisively? Ha! It goes without saying. There were only two of them up there in the public experimentation stage. By which he means the defendant, Benjamin Dirt Poor, and the victim, Conrad Kingsley. And, before the experiment began, the victim was definitely alive. Right! I saw him myself. He was definitely alive. Additionally, after he teleported along with the massive explosion, no one approached his body. In other words, the only one who could have committed the crime was the person who was up on stage with him. Shut up! Dr. Dirtpoor, is everything alright? Dr. Dirtpoor! Whoops, I went too far. Ah, uh, pardon me! I was trying to calculate the optimal electrogenesis factor for returning a particulated human body to its original state. You don't have to make such a big show of doing that here and now for all of us to see. Um, you just look like you might have something you wanted to say. After hearing the detective's last bit of testimony. That's right! I did! I believe the detective just said that it would have been impossible for anyone but me to have committed the crime! Aye, that's right. Who else could have possibly have stabbed him besides you? I have no idea! It's just... There's no way I could have stabbed him either! Eh? Uh? What do you mean, dirt poor son? Now listen up. I don't know about this heartless detective here, but... Human bodies have warm blood flowing through them. I'm aware of that. Then surely you must understand. If I'd used my chubby little Andrew to stab Mr. Kingsley, then... I should have left a sea of blood on the stage. No, a galaxy of blood. Oh. Half the citizens of London should have seen, should have been watching me at the time up there on that stage. 
foot. Not a single one of them saw that galaxy of blood. Am I correct? Hmm, that's true. That was smart. See, no one saw it. Hmm, I admit, I didn't see anything like that. What galaxy? Dr. Dirtpore. That was an amazing rebuttal. As my dogs are barking, my bad. Order! Order! Be right back. All right, where are we now? For the rudeness of enjoying my lord's chalice out of decision for an old friend's argument, I must beg your indulgence. That's Benjamin for you. Ah, oh, go on. I'm not as good as you are, Baroque. Truly. Unfortunately. True. Unfortunately, you're not. Huh? It would seem that you've overlooked one important detail. Uh, overlooked? One plausible reason that the stab wound would result in minimal blood loss. Ah, oh, I see. Detective, kindly add that possibility to your testimony. Sir! But what are they talking about? In that case, witness, please update your testimony. All the defendant would have to... What had to do was teleport the body without pulling out the weapon he stabbed it with. Was the thing... There was... Was the... Was the okay, was the thing actually in his body when they found him, though? Mata! So... What exactly do you mean by that? It's when the sharp object that stabbed the person is removed that massive blood loss can occur. Played as a sort of stopper, the warning prevents blood from escaping. I, I see. This piece of knowledge is so basic that those who are familiar with criminal investigation consider it to be common sense. It's not even worth calling it forensic medicine. <sighs> if Susano-san were here, I'm sure she would have told me about it. Oh, The good doctor here must have used his body to block the view of himself stabbing the victim right in the heart. And leaving the weapon in... in leaving the weapon in to act as a stopper. He didn't teleport the body. I, I would never use my beloved tools for such filthy work! Screwdrivers are made for driving screws! That's common sense to a scientist! Regardless, it would explain why no blood traces were found at the crime scene. Well, that's all there is to the testimony, huh? Never would have imagined that the victim would have been stabbed. Sword Von Zeke's hiding that fact on purpose? Anyway, in this situation, the best thing for me to do would be to give everything a good, hard pressing. This is... blood. It must belong to Mr. Kingsley. This is why I hate looking at murder weapons. Aw oh, man, he's been through several cases and it still bothers him. I think I've seen this weirdly assertive shape before. Yeah, no doubt about it. It was stuck in the wire mesh along the floor of the device. I think it might be a good idea to make note of this information. 
Metal screwdriver found stuck in the wire mesh along the floor of the device. I'm sorry. Twitch can be dumb. As long as the weapon was left stuck in the victim, there wouldn't have been much blood loss. Is that correct? Well, there have been no traces of blood on the stage, even though he'd been stabbed in the chest. We must indeed assume that the weapon acted as a stopper on the wound and prevented blood from leaking out. This can be considered common sense anywhere in the world, thanks to modern forensic medicine. Inc incidentally, Regarding the screwdriver, we actually found it when we were investigating the crime scene yesterday. What? On the floor in the wreckage of the device, it was stuck in the wire mesh. The detective stopped us when we went to pick it up. Isn't that right, Detective Gregson? Well, uh, that's true. Detective, don't tell me. You authorized the defense to investigate the device, which was protected by the special provision for the protection of science and technology. I hate that lo- I hate reading that. Uh, no, nothing of the- All I did was- I- I allowed him to look around the stage, as long as he didn't lay a finger on the device. It's true. This screwdriver was on the stage where the device was. But, don't you think that's odd? What's odd? Whoops! If the body had really been teleported with this still stuck in it, then there's no way it should have been left on the stage. Oh. Yeah. That's right. It should have been sent through the air with Kingsley Slan. Kingsley San to the Crystal Tower. And found still stuck in his body. Order, order! Well, what do you have to say about that, witness? Well, uh, I'm afraid I don't. Everything else attached to the victim's body were all teleported along with him. The screwdriver really had been struck into the it really had been struck into the victim's body. Stuck. But naturally, it would have also been teleported. This is an unexpected turn of events. I was told there was no way hyperelectric instantaneous teleportation could actually work. And it's being discussed here in court as if it had worked. Alright, I better throw all my weight into this one. Your Honor. As long as the prosecution cannot offer a logical explanation for this contradiction, then we have no choice but to conclude that the prosecution's case is flawed. Go, Naruto. You go. It looks like Lord Van Zeeks has no rebuttal. What is it, defendant? I thought so. It's just as I predicted. Mr. Naruto, please, rest assured. Of... What? According to the conclusion I reached, there's no contradiction here. What? What? Even if Andrew had been stuck in Mr. Kingsley's body, it's only natural that he alone would have been, wouldn't have been teleported and would have remained on the stage. Huh? What? Hi! Why? What? The, oh, there goes the bottle. <laughs> Apparently, we need to hear further testimony. From this defendant. No. This outstanding scientist. Hmm. I worked so hard to find that contradiction. 
Jeez, you can't take your eyes off these scientists for one second. In that case, the court requests the defendant's testimony. Give us your scientific stance on the contradiction that the defense just pointed out. In the name of the god of science. No, don't. Why are you fighting against us? Scientific stance on the contradiction. My research hasn't yet reached the stage of compiling the data from the experiment, but... Well, theoretically, Meto is, un is unable to be teleported. That's why the metal weapon was left behind. In other words, the point Mr. Naruhoro just indicated is not the problem at all. I owe Mr. Kingslay a great deal. He helped my theory take shape. It's my duty to defend the device we made together! Benny! What are you doing? Um, about this defendant's statement just now. Metal objects cannot be teleported. Apparently that was part of his theory. Meaning? The weapon, the screwdriver, was made of metal. Even if the body had been teleported with that still stuck in it. The screwdriver alone would have been left behind on the stage, meaning that, the, meaning that there would be no contradiction in the state of the crime scene. Therefore? It would still have been possible for Dr. Dirt Poor to have committed the murder. Which would mean that my theory was correct! What? what are you doing? That's why we had to build a cage that Mr. Kingsley was to be teleported in out of wood. No one asked you! Um, Dr. Dirtpour. This guy's like the opposite of Manga Doll! <laughs> yes? Just, whose side are you on right now? I didn't give that piece of testimony because I'm on anyone's side. I just wanted my theory to be correct. I think any scientist would. No! Stop! St what? So, is Dr. Dirtpour an ally or an enemy here? In any case, go ahead with your cross-examination, Japanese boy. It's like Dirtpour wants to be admitted guilty, what the- Yes, please do, Mr. Narahodo. Ugh. The shit. What the duck? Meadow is unable to be teleported. Uh, metal weapon was left behind. Let's present. Um. <laughs> Dr. Durpor, according to your theory, the device was incapable of teleporting objects made of metal, correct? Yes, that's right. In that case, please have a look at this photo. It shows the crime scene. Please notice what's on Kingsley-san's face. He appears to be wearing metal rimmed glasses. The metal Metal. Ah. ah! Oh, good job. Good job. As I recall, the screwdriver that had been used as a weapon was discovered on the floor of the stage. However, in that case... The victim's metal frame glasses should also have been lying there. Oh! Oh! My... My theory! This is incredibly difficult, difficult for me to say, Dr. Dirtpour, but... There's an obvious contradiction in your theory. Do that dance, Ben. Do that dance. Order! 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 What is the meaning of this? If the teleportation didn't actually occur that day, then, that would mean it's possible that the victim was actually killed somewhere other than up on stage. 
In other words, it would have been possible for someone other than the defendant to be the murderer. My theory is real. My experiment that day definitely succeeded. Objection. May I be permitted to speak as a member of the Royal Science Association? What is it, Jirafor? As someone who devoted his life to science, there's one thing I cannot tolerate. And that's those who commit fraud under, pre under the pretense of practicing science. Now hold on there. Are you calling me a fraud? I believe your theory was just proven false, was it not? In other words, that experiment was nothing more than trickery. I can declare this decisively. The man standing there is an audacious, shameless, fraudulent bastard. That device of his ought to be torn apart and thoroughly investigated. That device is the embodiment of my theory! Anyway, it should be covered under this special provision for the protection of science and technology! What?! Alright, who said- who was it? Who made up such a ridiculous rule? This seems to be heading in an unfortunate direction. What can I do to help Dr. Dirtborn? Raise an objection? Wait and see. Raise an objection? Work. Okay, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Dr. Dirtborn never claimed that his new technology was perfected yet. Besides. Besides what? Spending a huge sum of money to build a fake device and presenting it in a public experiment. He had no reason to go such lengths to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. That, if it's a reason you're looking for, there is one. And a glaring one at that. It was obviously for the research fund. Funding, excuse me. On the off chance that that flimsy theory ended up gaining government recognition, the defendant and his cronies stood the chance to secure themselves a generous sum in research funding. B my cronies? Just how much money would it have been? Ten pounds, perhaps? It was a mind-boggling sum. Five hundred pounds in the space of a year. Oh! You could have all kinds of fun on that for years! This honest experiment aiming to secure that financial aid have been on the rise recently. There are also a great number of scientists who will fight over how that financial aid is divided among them. A very compelling motive for murder. I believe we can all agree on that. It's not like that. I I wasn't trying to hoodwink the government. My theory is real. Please believe me. Regardless of how suspect his theory sounds, the fact remains that the victim was indeed instantly teleported to the Crystal Tower. In other words, the experiment was a, su a success. But Baroque. In any, ca in which case, the only one who could have committed the murder remains the defendant. B Baroque. Just where is this trial headed? I don't know, man. If I may, Your Honor. What is it, Lord Vanzix? The prosecution would like to summon a new witness at this juncture. A new... witness? Who might that be? A few people who witnessed the incident from some VIP seats. You mean, they're eyewitnesses? The court accepts the prosecution's request. The court would also like to hear some eyewitness testimony. The prosecution claims remains firm. The experiment was the real deal. Upon that stage, the defendant killed the investor, the victim. Defense. Y yes! You will also take this opportunity to reaffirm your position on this case. There's definitely a contradiction in Dr. Dirtpoor's theory. What am I supposed to think about that? The court will now take a brief recess. We ask that the prosecution prepare the new witnesses during that time. 
As you wish. Now then, the court will begin its 20 minute recess. I think that's a to be continue, right? Well, either way, I'm probably gonna stop there. Yes, okay, good, good. All right, good place to stop then. Uh, we shall continue the trial then, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, either around 6 or 7 p.m., around the same times again. The usual. Save. What the, f what the frick is Benjamin trying to do, though? I don't understand. Oh my god, scientists. Scientists, man! Hello, I'm back. So I don't know if I was if I was even paying attention to myself, but I forgot to mention this at the uh, at the start of this is that I'm trying to stop myself from saying the F word a lot because I like just use it way too much, like a freaking sailor mouth, and I need to get out of that habit. So, uh, hi. We did just come from a spooky wax museum. <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to. to condition myself to say duck instead of the F word <laughs> to get myself out of doing it because I do I do it way too much and it needs to stop somehow somewhere so uh if I do happen to say the F word by all means quack at me because <laughs> I need to stop it It is October 23rd, 8.52 a.m., the Old Bailey's Defendant's Lobby. It's been six months since I was banned from defending in court. And yet, here I am again. Oh, also, we are definitely not going to get through the entire trial. No. I have at least an hour, for, about 40 to an hour of energy left to do this, so yeah, we're not, we're not going to get through this trial today. <laughs> No! Uh, Mr. Narahodo! Good morning, Dr. Dirtpoor. What is this, Mr. Narahodo? Uh, I've never experienced such an oppressive atmosphere before. I feel it too, every time I come here. It's terrifying. Are you telling me that my homeland, England, has finally managed to develop some sort of technology that allows them to manipulate the weight of the atmosphere at will? Himself? Oh no! He usually has someone with him! Defend it! Defense! It's time for the trial to begin. Proceed to the courtroom at once. Huh. Right. Science experiment that couldn't have possibly been a success. And the doctor, who insisted that it was. Got to find the answer to that contradiction. Not a hold of Ryanosuke. Oh no, he's by himself. I worry for him. BB. You can do this, Not a hold of. I believe you got um four, five cases now under your belt. Yes. <laughs> Same day, nine ten in nine uh, nine ten in the morning. Old Bailey Supreme Court. Do we get new jurors? Like, legit? Now then, in the name of the Queen, I now declare court to be in session. We will now begin the fair and impartial trial of the defendant, Benjamin Dirtpoor. Are both the prosecution and defense prepared to make their case? The prosecution is ready. The defense is ready. It's been six months since my last trial, and today... Oh no! Oh no! Usado san isn't here. I'm fighting this battle alone. Ugh. Maybe it's my imagination. The atmosphere in here feels even heavier today than usual. Now then! The victim in this case was Mr. Kingsley. If I. Mr. Kingsley. I remember him. Conrad Kingsley. I'm pretty sure it's mostly an emotional thing. Oh, anyway. Is... Uh, is our... Okay. Are you ready for today, Mr. Naraholdo? Please 
spend my life in the trial today. Defend the secret behind my theory. What powers? Which powers my hyperelectric instantaneous teleportation device? Yes, I will. In order to do that, I'll have to prove that the huge explosion two days ago was an accident. But we'll be fine. I'm sure everything will go just swimmingly. Too bad, Mr. Naruto. Looks like you drew the short straw with this client. Homesan, you're here. And on time! What? You're so mean. I can't believe you just left me behind. It took me an hour to wake Homesy up. I'll have you know. Oh. 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 Could it be? Are you him? Sherlock Holmes! Is that you? That's right. It's me, Sherlock Holmes, in the flesh. I left England and immigrated to Germany, but even I've heard of you. Oh, right. They sell the Strand magazine in Germany too, don't they? This last issue was thrilling as usual. The adventure of the Silver Blaze and that famous deduction. Ah, that case is etched deeply in my memory. It was the one with the snake, right? No! That was the adventure of the Speckled Band. Anyway, Homesan, thanks for coming today. Waking up early to cheer me on. Uh, sorry to have to break it to you, but I'm actually busy. Huh? I've got to go to Madame Rosad's now. Are you posing as a temporary wax figure again today? No, no, it's about the kidnapping. The madam finally requested my service. Oh, you mean the ransom note for the stolen wax figure? This week's pay, uh, the wax figure's life depends on it, after all. This is the case that even I have to focus on seriously. In that case, I guess there's no choice, huh? Well, I could wrap up a case like that before breakfast if I really put my mind to it. I'll solve it in two shakes of a lamb's tail and be back before you know it. Well, to be precise. I have no breakfast to eat until I get paid for solving it. Well then, I guess you really will have to give it your all. That's right, but in life's typical ir ironic fashion, I'm always at my hungriest when I need to focus the hardest on a case. What are the chances of that? I suppose it's just one of those eternal mysteries. Ah, ah, yes, yes. I understand that feeling perfectly. Yare, yare. Anyway, Miss Dr. Dirtpoor, I wish you luck. Thank you very much. You know, I'm getting slightly worried about my now because the last time it did the thing where the sound picked up, that means the USB is starting to fail me. I'm a little scared. I'm just, just a little scared. Also, that's the wrong... Did I put down the wrong one? I did put down the wrong one. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, I'm slightly worried now. Just a little worried, I hope. I hope my 3DS is fine because, uh, these things cost money! <laughs> Oh, one more thing, Mr. Naruto. Could I have a quick word with you over there? What is it? That you're rather clueless when it comes to science, I figure I should let you know. Hyperelectric instantaneous teleportation? It's truly the technologies of dreams, but... Realizing the, doctor's, the little doctor's theory would be completely impossible. But the doctor said his experiment was a success. Yes, it appears that he truly believes that. I read through Benny's papers too, but I think it's a logical impossibility, at least on Earth. That must mean the doctor's theory is off by a lot, huh? An impossible experiment was a success. I guess that means there's a contradiction here, huh? Indeed, and that contradiction is probably the most important point in, to this trial. 
What could this mean? Well, anyway, I must be off. I wish you luck as well. Okay, work hard, Holmesy. Anyway, you'll be on your own today, so do your best, okay? Huh? What are you gonna do, Iris Chan? Oh, I've got something I've gotta take care of, so I've got to go too. I see. <laughs> I'll have a big surprise waiting for you later. Sure. Wonder what it is. Naruhodo's gonna be by.